Hi, I'm Joe Clark, Product Specialist for Invention Zero Theorem, and today uh, I'm going to be talking about the 6100 series uh, accuracy and how it applies to AMS 2750D. Uh, additionally, I'm going to be talking about performing the input adjust and demonstrating how our 6100 series recorder, uh, in conjunction with the cold junction compensation block, uh, meets the secondary instrument requirement for AMS 2750D. Now, for this example, I'm going to be using a 6180. A recorder. It also is fitted with a, a cold junction compensation block, which essentially increases the accuracy and the stability of the inputs coming into the recorder. I'm going to be demonstrating uh, everything via the bridge connection, which is actually up on the screen at the moment. A bridge uh, is software that allows you to uh, remotely view what is going on on the recorder all over Ethernet communications. So, what you can see in front of you right now is an IP address. Uh, which is the default IP address of the recorder. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, start to connect, put in the default password of 100, and now I'm going to connect to the recorder. So right now um, uh, it is loading the software, it's connecting to the recorder, and this example again is going to be utilizing just a single input. It's a type K thermocouple uh, scaled for 0 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and that value is coming from a non calibrated signal generator. So keep that in mind when we're going through these values that the data, the, the values that are coming in is coming from a non-calibrated source so you need to account for a little bit of error from that device as well. And what I want to kind of show you is the kind of accuracy that you can expect or relatively close to it when you take the recorder out of the box uh, you know give or take setting up the channels but the kind of accuracy you can see once you take it out of the box compared to the type of accuracy you can get once an input adjust is done on the recorder. So right now, again, I've got zero degrees uh, coming into the recorder uh, from a non-calibrated source. Um, so right now, it's we're reading about mm, maybe 0 0.4 degrees, 0 0.3 degrees off from the actual value. Let's go ahead and jump up to 500 degrees and see what kind of readings we get. So again, letting it stabilize a little bit, it looks like we're reading right around 500 degrees, maybe 0.2 degrees off. Let's jump up to 1,000 degrees. And 1,000 degrees it seems to give us the same exact kind of readings, uh, maybe no more than 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degrees off. Let's just go ahead and jump right up to 2,000 uh, degrees. And at 2,000 degrees, we're probably going to see the biggest amount of offset here. Uh, with any kind of instrument out there, um, the linearization error obviously increases based on the scale of the input. So had we gone from 0 to 1,000 degrees, and that was our full scale, the accuracy would be uh, better than uh, 0 to 2,000 degrees. So even though we are going 0 to 2,000 degrees, which is for the most part majority of the scale for the thermocouple, uh, we're still reading relatively accurate readings here of uh, 2,000 degrees, no more than 0.4 degrees off. So right there alone, we're already meeting our specification uh, of 0.5 degree Fahrenheit uh, accuracy when you use the cold junction compensation. However, um, in the event that you need even higher accuracy, or if you're using your recorder for an AMS 2750D requirement, you need to calibrate your recorder either monthly, quarterly, or even annually. So let's go ahead and, and walk through the process of calibrating or adjusting the input channels. It's actually a really easy process to do. So the first thing I want to do is log into my recorder because currently I'm logged out. I'm going to log in as an engineer. Again, put in the default password. And now I'm logged in as an engineer. Over on the right hand side we have a button down here. It's called the root menu. If we click on operator, what operator is going to do is essentially get into more of the configuration settings of the recorder. When that pops up, we're going to have about six buttons going across, and we're going to want to click on system and then go down to where it says input adjust. What's unique about our recorders is that we give you the ability to calibrate or adjust more than one channel at a time. Um, for this example, however, we're only going to be calibrating one channel. So what I'm going to do is instead of saying I want to calibrate one, channels one through six, I'm just going to calibrate the first channel. So I'm going to change the last channel from 6 down to 1 and you'll notice right away that it only shows channel 1 as being calibrated. Again, if I wanted to choose a different channel, clicking the button that says select channel, 
uh, I could then check which channels I want to calibrate. I'm only calibrating the first one, which is the only one available. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do, uh, we actually want to click on the Adjust Channels button. When we do this, it's going to ask you for a low point value. The default is zero. You can leave it as zero, that's perfectly fine. A force habit for me, however, is I typically will do 10% and 90% of my full scale as my low and high point. So based on a scale of zero to 2,000, 10% of that would obviously be a low point of 200. So I'm gonna input a value of 200, and at the same time, I'm gonna take my signal generator, and I'm gonna input 200 degrees. When I do that, you'll see down here um, that it starts reading the value that I've got coming into it. And when you do this, you wanna make sure that you give it about 10 seconds for it to stabilize. Um, otherwise, doing it too quickly may catch a value that is slightly higher or lower than what you want. Once it stabilizes, go ahead and click on Apply. And now it's going to ask you for the high point. Now, the default is 5. You don't want to utilize 5. Again, as I mentioned before, the way that I do it is 10% and 90% of your entire scale. So 90% of 2,000 is going to give me a scale of 1,800. So I put in a value of 1,800. I then take my signal generator and put in 1,800 degrees. Once I've done that, I let the recorder stabilize for roughly 10 seconds. And once that's done and the recorder has stabilized, I can go ahead and hit apply. And now that I've done that, my first input channel is now uh, calibrated and uh, literally it only took one minute to do. So that being said, let's, let's go back to our numeric page. Let's start back at zero degrees and let's see what kind of readings we get now. We had pretty accurate before out of the box, but let's see what kind of readings we have now that we've done an input adjust. Okay, with zero degrees inputted uh, into the recorder, it looks like I'm reading right around zero degrees. Um, it looks like I've seen maybe 0.1 or maybe 0.2 uh, degrees of an error, but you can see that it's pretty stable right around zero degrees. Let's jump up to 500. Now at 500 degrees, again, as we begin to stabilize, um, it looks like we're getting the same kind of results. Uh, probably no more than 0.1 or 0.2 degrees of error. Let's jump up to 1,000 degrees now. Again, as we stabilize, we're seeing maybe 0.2 degrees of error. And we can go ahead and just jump up to the 2,000 degrees mark now. And now that we're at 2,000 degrees, it appears that the input is pretty much dead on with very little fluctuation. So one thing we can definitely take away from this is that the urethrum recorder out of the box with a cold junction compensation is going to give you 0.5 degree Fahrenheit, if not better, out of the box, non-calibrated, okay? Once you do an input adjust, which we saw only took roughly a minute to complete, we're now well exceeding that 0.5 degrees, and now we're looking at the 0.2 to 0.3 degree Fahrenheit range. Um, so that's it. That's really how simple it is to do an input adjust, and I just really wanted to show you guys how accurate the urethrum recorders are. Um, so what's popping up on the screen right now would be my contact information. If you guys have any questions, um, any comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, thanks. For